Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another SLG Meetup, your host, Alvaro Nunez. Yeah, still me, no beer, but <laughs> rejuvenated to bring you another exciting episode with one of our super interesting guests, where we bring all kind of different people from the luxury space to talk about their unique stories, projects, and for that, today we're going to have Kevin Tengono. He's the founder and architect of K Tengono Design Studio, which is an architect and art and design company in Indonesia. I mean, I gotta tell you, I was in Bali a couple months ago and I completely loved it. And the houses were spectacular. So for that, he's gonna be giving us all our roundabout on his story, the projects that he's working on, and definitely you guys are gonna enjoy it. There he is. Kelvin, what's going on, my friend? Good, good, how are you? Nice, I like the glasses. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thanks it's for a bit having late me. Over man. There, no? Thanks for staying up late uh, for us. It's all good. It's still what time is it now? Eight twenty, so it's it's oh. definitely okay. Yeah. Are you a, I'm are still you a alive. night all? Night all or early? <laughs> early right. A bit much. A bit yeah. much of a night all, honestly, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting, interesting. <laughs> I saw in the stories on some of the projects you were working on. Spectacular. So I'm really grateful that you're here today. Because I really wanted to personally get to know more about your story and also to share it with our audience because Indonesia in general has some of the most unique projects that not a lot of people, especially in this side of the world, know about. But the properties are spectacular. So tell us a little bit about K Tengono Design Studio, what you're all about, and then we'll get into the details on some of those incredible projects that you're working on. Definitely. Um, we are a an interior and architecture firm. Uh, we do different projects like residentials. Uh, you, you know, we have a variety body of work, actually. Uh, recently, we're commissioned in uh, healthcare. So uh, we, we, we do a little bit here and there. Uh, we look mm -hmm. forward to create architecture that really try to be contextualized uh, with the site and really understand nature uh, with light and air into uh, different projects of ours. Mm -hmm. We're based in Jakarta though. Yeah, in Jakarta. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're based in Jakarta. No, which is fantastic. I, and you know, I mean, I saw some of the properties that you guys are working on. And as you're saying, it's like building that holistic spatial environment alongside with some of the uniqueness, right, on, on those projects. Now, let me ask you, Kelvin, because obviously, there is a huge variety when it comes to projects in Jakarta or Indonesia in, in particular, especially because you've been doing projects also in Bali. And I, I, I think that a lot of people have this, this perception where properties in Indonesia for the most part are you know, kind of average when in reality it's like some of the most beautiful properties that you could even see around the world. And the materials and everything that you use is what makes it so affordable to work on some projects, correct? Correct. Yeah, definitely. A lot of the property, um, I think we have a lot of advantages of, from, the, the, from the tropicality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the nature and everything. So we, we, have, we have the mountains, we have the ocean. So it's really, really nice, particularly to have, uh, to be doing projects in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been some of the biggest challenge? Because obviously with the advantages of being in a tropical environment, it also comes with some difficulties, right? So what's right. been one of the most difficult challenges on launching some of these projects? Um, I think in an architectural design way, um, it's, it's more uh, difficult to work with the humidity uh, mm -hmm. honestly saying in a tropical country, right? So we really have to pay attention on how we could incorporate uh, cross ventilation in our projects. Um, honestly, working from, uh, you know, I, I used to go to the US and I was working there for a little bit too. Uh, you, the US is just a lot more advanced. Yeah, um, but yeah than, than here. So that in here, we, we do a lot of site visits. We literally sketch a lot in the construction uh, mm -hmm. site. Um, 
sometimes you really have to understand uh, your, who you're working with, uh, if they are really, really able to uh, read the details uh, that we have provided. Uh, you know, it's just a lot of communications uh, right. in here. Yeah. Mm. Let me ask you, Kevin, because obviously you said like the U.S., for example, is a bit more advanced. But in what regards? Technology, materials, the way that everything is being processed? Um, I think the culture, uh, the the people, the workers, uh, the builders, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. right? Got it. Yeah. Got it. Although I'll tell you something. The people in Indonesia, I got in love. You know, I feel like it's such a refresher to go and interact with all the people in there because the majority of them are so kind and they're just super hard workers. When I was in Bali, every person I saw, they were just working beyond what you even expected. And that was not just one person, it was everybody. And I really enjoyed seeing that because here usually you see a lot of people complaining about the little things over there. <laughs> Nobody complained. I mean, I don't know right. how much is uh, in your projects, but at least from my experience, it was very refreshing. Aside from that, do you mainly build these houses for clientele that are locals or also for international people? Um, right now, a lot of our clients are actually local. Mm -hmm. So, um, but maybe in the future where happy to accept international clients at the same time, maybe. Right. But I'm a bit curious because I, I heard that you cannot really own a property. Like it's owned by the government. You are basically leasing it long term. Is that correct? Or how does that work? Right. For, uh, for foreigners, uh, yes. you're, you're not supposed to own a land uh, in Indonesia. So you you can either have a partner, a local partner instead. Okay. But um, myself, actually, I, I was born in Indonesia, so I hold an Indonesian passport. So gotcha. that's an that's a advantage, yeah. That's good, that's good. Okay, so you actually have to have an Indonesian passport in order for, to own it. Otherwise, you only can lease it long term or partner up with somebody locally and because you could technically start a business, own it with a, a partner, and that business is owning these properties. Is that like you could be a real estate portfolio in that regards? Is that possible? Oh yeah, definitely. As long as you have a international, no, as long as you have a local partner, you a should local be able partner, to do yeah. that. Got yeah. you. So there is yeah. multiple ways of doing that. Good, I like that because the prices are completely affordable in comparison to some other projects that are similar quality or similar, you know, dimensions here in the States. So what would you say some of these latest projects that you've been working on will go for in terms of price? Um, do you mean by how much it costs compared to the yes. US or? Uh... Yeah, like for example, like let's say a $10 million house here in Miami, how much will that cost in Indonesia, just to put in perception the difference. Wow, 10 million would be like a mega, mega uh, project, actually. <laughs> right, it would be the best I would say. Ladder, right? <laughs> so you, you get everything, everything yeah. with the $10 well, million. Dollars. That, yeah. that, that's one of the things that shocked me so much because when we were in Bali and we were in Uluwatu, I remember seeing next to Ayana, it was you know a nice resort, and Next to Ayana, we saw on the hill these humongous properties on the cliff facing the ocean. And they were, in my opinion, some of the most beautiful homes I've ever seen. And I'm like, oh, my God, how much will this cost? And when they were telling me the prices, it was like, oh, $3 million. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, with $3 million, you don't even get a two-bedroom apartment in Miami. Like, I'm like... <laughs> Obviously, we're talking about location, destination, like where is the demand and the different things. But for that's why I was asking you what kind of clientele you are getting because I'm getting more and more of my friends that are like world travelers and that can work remotely and that also are kind of like influencers that literally they don't need to be 
anywhere 24 seven and they are the cold nomads, right? So they can just be anywhere. Oh, yeah. And if they want to have a base, may as well have this beautiful mansion, like some of the properties that you're working on at a really affordable price. And I don't think that there's many places that can do that. That's why I was very shocked with the quality and the design that you're doing, but also the price that you can get for those projects. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I mean, if we're talking about Bali. Itself, Are you talking right? also it's, about, it's, it's also labor? It's because of the labor or the materials, a combination of both, the labor cost. Well, I think it's mainly because of the currency, right? I think, I think that's what I think is what really makes a difference, but also labor. Labor yeah. here is very, very affordable. Uh, Got it. We have a lot of local material. That's, what, that's when I found out when I just uh, came back from the US, right? I found out, wow, all of this wood, uh, it's actually being exported to the US instead. Uh, you Got know, it. Different you have stones, it rata. Mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. No, it's very good. And I'll tell you, you know, Kelvin, it was very interesting when, when I was there as well. I met with a friend of mine from Miami that actually built himself a nice house. And now he has it as an Airbnb and he's doing pretty well. And when we were talking about the whole business model, obviously like him or like many other business owners, whether they're hotels or construction companies, architects, they usually charge in dollars to the foreigners. <laughs> at a price at a price that is very similar to what you will be encountering any other way but right. the cost you know the labor and everything else that they have internally they'll pay it in the local currency and that's where the margins are so big so it's yeah, it's interesting business model i even myself was like yeah, maybe i'll start doing something there you and i need to find ways where we can work together. I'm <laughs> sure a lot of people will be interested in getting themselves a nice property in Indonesia. That's funny that you said it though, because me, myself, when I, when I go to, the, to Bali, some people, they thought I would, I'm not Indonesian. So they do that <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, come on. You know, I'll, be, you I'll start yeah. speaking in Indonesian. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, sorry, sorry. You know. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so maybe, scenario. maybe Alvaro, next time you come to Bali, you got to pick up some Indonesians. Yes, yes, yes. Then, we need to we need to do something. We need to do something for sure. <laughs> now, what's your what's your favorite part about living in Indonesia? You live in Jakarta, right? I live in Jakarta at the moment. So, yeah. what's what's your favorite thing about being in Jakarta or overall in Indonesia? Well, honestly, um, I think I really like the opportunity. The fact that man, it's 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 really it's really crazy how things are really uh, happening in here. Uh, you know, you see a lot of constructions everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. The people, the culture, the food, everything. The it's, food, it's, yeah. it's been amazing. Yeah. yeah. Very, very, very uh, tasty. No, I mean, I agree with you. To be honest, the culture, the lifestyle, the people, food, everything is just fantastic. And, I'm telling you, as somebody that has traveled around the world, that there is few places like Indonesia where you feel that 360 full power of positivity and great experiences. So with that being said, I always have this question to our guests. And obviously for you, I'm sure it's going to mean completely different thing. But what is luxury to you? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think luxury can be interpreted in a different way. I think uh, mainly for different people, where they will think luxury a different way. But unless, at least for for our practice, right? I think luxury comes with comfort, uh, comes with a good visual connection to views. Uh, comfort meaning you get a nice uh, natural sunlight, ventilation, and you know. Uh, something that is more spectacular, uh, good material, take the tactility from it, the texture and everything. Uh, it just makes you really excited to be a part of the space and really enjoy the spatial qualities. Because, mm -hmm. No, that's yeah. good. That's good. It's a good way of seeing it. And, you know, definitely it's coming from a successful architect that has done tremendous projects, which I encourage everybody that is watching this now or will watch it later or listen to it later, 
to follow Kelvin. Uh, what's the best way to contact you or to reach out or see what you're doing? Will it be your Instagram page, your website, what it will be? Uh, connect with me in any way, man. Uh, yeah. Email me. I'm really easy to get connected to. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, make sure you also stay tuned with what he's posting because some of the most beautiful projects are showcased on his Instagram page. A lot of people obviously love to see beautiful homes, so it's just a refresher to go to your page because every project that you're working on, he has something, as you mentioned, holistic, right, approach that really puts you in a perspective on the beautiful thing that humans can do, right? And, and that's also coming from a position on, on yourself of being somebody leading that wave on the holistic approach to doing architect in a place like Indonesia. So any plans of expanding to the US? Not at the moment, but planning on maybe expanding to Bali instead, so. Yeah, well, I we'll saw see. you've been doing, I've been, you've been, you've been doing some projects there already, right? I saw some of the properties there. Yep, yep, starting, mm -hmm. starting to, yeah. Amazing. Really exciting. Well, I look forward to seeing your progress and definitely you have already a, a good contact point here in the States for anything you need. So I look forward to seeing you very soon. And before wrapping this up, I wanted to ask you one last question. If you will be sharing one big takeaway of something you've learned throughout your career, what would it be? I guess be always excited and really love your, what you do and really just be resilient. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. You can't fake once you passion. Love, yeah. 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 Once, once you love what you do, you forget about time, you forget about things and you just focus. Yeah. I, I totally agree. When you do things with passion, everything flows much more naturally and people feel it, you know? So that's a great point. And, and I always encourage people to think that way. So, Thanks again, Kelvin. Appreciate it. Anything else that you would like to add? Just want to say thanks for having me. And, you know, good luck and keep in touch. <laughs> Thank you, Kelvin. We'll be in touch very soon. So thanks again for everything. Thank you, everybody that has been tuning in. And until the next one, see you. All right. See you. Bye-bye. <laughs>